Peter, I'm guessing um, the markets right now are, are being more influenced by a lack of optimism around a U.S. stimulus package and not as lifted by, um, you know, any kind of exuberance over the EU agreement. Why isn't it as important to European investors when, um, you know, Angela Merkel is able to overcome Poland and Hungary, challenges from Poland and Hungary to, to make an historic deal? Yeah, you're right. Um, it's super significant. Um, I think for European investors, though, um, it was probably within the realms of expectation already. So I would expect the what's been achieved yesterday and really over the last few months with the creation and implementation of the recovery fund, um, the much better um, understanding of uh, their monetary policy tools and the importance they, uh, they have on the euro area in uh, reducing tail risks from the ECB. I think as, as foreign investors really start to understand that, that's when you're going to see much more flow in, and optimism into European risk assets and into the currency itself. But for now, I think just looking at European action, uh, it's, it's, uh, it simply is already a known, whereas uh, we're looking at US equities, noting that there are some technical factors on the VIX that look a bit concerning. We might have a, a, the US government running out of money today. There are some near-term factors which have to, have to be navigated okay. before we can go back to looking at the strategic themes. OK, and let me ask you about where that all leaves the euro then, Peter. Those strategic themes, the recovery fund uh, now signed off by European leaders, uh, the ECB's actions of yesterday and comments of yesterday. How much pressure upwards do we see on the euro from here? So we think uh, in six months it'll be a 130 against the dollar, which is, I think, a massive move, an aggressive move. There's, there's two main factors now. The, the implementation, all of the good news, the structural good news for Europe, that's a done deal. Um, but it's still yet to be appreciated by the market. The euro still trades at a, at a marginal discount to its fundamentals, as we see it, has been doing that since the periphery crisis uh, and also did that at, at its launch um, between 1999 and about 2003. What we expect to see is that the euro is going to establish itself not just as fundamentally a correctly constructed currency area, but it's, it should establish itself as, as, a, as a safe haven. So some of that safe haven premium, which the dollar has been uh, has had for on a structural basis the last 10, 20 years, and, and it, within the last five years, it really was quite painful for the U.S. economy. That is going to be transferred over to the euro and to yen and to, and to the renminbi. Um, mm. And that's the shift that we're expecting next year. And, of course, global economy goes back to growth. And in, in a growth environment, uh, cyclical currencies, which is what the euro currently is, have a lot of upside to them.